Mate, when it comes to supporting United, I swear to God, this you age watching this football club. Rasmus Hoyland scoring his first goal as Manchester United come from 2-0 down to beat Aston Villa 3-2 on Boxing Day after a first half with ridiculous set-piece errors. But my word, was that a second-half team performance? Garnacho world class, two goals. Should have been three, really. It was a city offside. Anyway, Rasmus Hoyland with the winner. And the photos that you will see off the back of it. The Look at his face, man. And look how that face changed from pure screaming relief to that. That right there is why I will support players who I can see are trying for Manchester United. Rasmus Hoyland, it's not been through a lack of effort that he hadn't scored his first goal. But to choose that game there, to choose that moment there, enjoy it, Rasmus. And the whole team in that second half, man. Eric Ten Hag. I've got no doubt that he's got a massive smile on his face because when we went in at halftime there, there were boos at Old Trafford, understandably, after a shocking first half when it comes to the set pieces. But, you know, you know I, weren't... I don't know what to think about this team. It's so hard to watch United. It is Jekyll and Hyde going game to game. It is Jekyll and Hyde from half to half. Man, I've got a red face. I'm, I'm so ridiculously over the moon for Rasmus Hoyland. And if that, I swear on my life, you know how many times I've said this, this this season, but here we go, I'm going to say it again. If that right there can't be a starting point and a turning point, I said the same thing after Brentford and it meant sweet FA. I said the same thing after getting a gritty defensive point away at Anfield. And what happened? We had, then got pumped by West Ham. But I swear on my life, if you can't turn that win there against one of the informed teams in the league, if you can't build on that, you're never going to build on anything. And can I just take this moment here to say, not only was that a world-class, man-of-the-match, deservedly performance there from Garnacho, he did that on the right wing. That's not his position. Anthony, well... He's really shown you how to play out of the right wing there. Garnacho, incredible, wonderful, star quality, taking things on himself when his team needed him to. Not only the first goal, not only the second goal, but just the whole game itself. Alejandro is an absolute star. And my did Terren Hag need that? And that second half performance there, the intensity of it from United, right? It's straight into every single duel, chasing down balls. The levels just went up. We got that goal straight after half time, And I'll be honest, I was mega frustrated about it. Because I think to be offside from that position there, I said it on Twitter and I'll say it again. Now, I think it's just, it's poor football IQ. It's, it's like being able to see where the Rashford is with the pass there and to assess the situation and go, take one step back. To be able to do both of those two things in real time is not an easy task. Elite level footballers, Manchester United footballers should be able to do it. Villa were playing the high line the whole game. I think they've got like an average of like 4.8 offsides against them so far in the Premier League this season. Man United had like six offsides in the first half and that one there. But the fact that we didn't let that, the fact that Garnacho didn't let that negatively affect us. Oh man, that's... Oh, he needed that. We needed that. And there's no United fan that can say, oh, these players aren't playing for the manager and all that jazz. But I think there's every United fan that can say that it just feels like it felt like we were out of ideas in the first half. Kind of like the players didn't really know what to do. The low was cutting in sometimes. It, it feels complicated. But when you strip it back and Manchester United, I suppose in that situation there with 2-0, like, it's a simpler situation, right? You don't have to focus too much on... Man, I don't know. Maybe they're better in, in that sort of environment and situation where we're... Oh, sod knows. I'm kind of... I'm just spitballing now. Because my chain of thought, my whole thing has kind of gone watching that game. Because to see that response there at a time when Dave Brailsford is sat in the crowd, Jim Ratcliffe's 25% takeover was announced on Christmas Eve, 4pm. Arseholes, by the way, the Glazers doing that. And... 
what's going to happen with Ten Hag's future, we don't know. And I can't say with any confidence he's going to be our manager at the end of the season, the way that we have been playing. And the players go in and put a performance like that. We've just beaten a top nine team. It's not really something that United should be celebrating, but in the, in the context of this season, I probably will. And in the context of that game, I probably will. Because at half time, it felt like we were going, I don't know, it, just, it felt like a one way street. And there wasn't really a way of turning it around. Unless your name's Alejandro Garnacho. <laughs> Get that photo up again, baby. Let me just zoom in on that. And unless your name's Rasmus Holland. And this, ladies and gents, is why you support your players. If they're putting in the effort and that it's just not working. Look, in that first half, Hoyland looked absolutely shot of his confidence. You know, like every, every decision, like chances that he would have taken in his first few games at United, he wasn't taking. I think there was a chance he could have had a volley, his chance he could have had a header, and it's just like he's chesting it. He's taking a step back. His confidence was shot. The players, the arms are going in the air. Sort of Rashford was getting frustrated because the ball wasn't put through. Hoyland was getting frustrated with Rashford. Bruno was getting frustrated with everybody because that's what Bruno does. And it just seemed like it wasn't going to come from anywhere. But that second half, oh, man. That there is a nice little late Christmas present. That really, really is. But can we just go back here? and to, uh, There is an overwhelming sense of positivity that will come out of that game. But let's not pretend that it was a perfect game of football. We hired a set-piece specialist, Eric Ramsey, specifically in 2021 to work on our defensive and attacking set pieces. We are limp when it comes to attacking set pieces. We do not offer any threat whatsoever. And those two goals that we conceded were just diabolical defending, organisation, leadership, awareness. I don't know what words you want to use to describe the things we didn't have defending both of those set pieces. But the first one, ball was swung in. I think the players were confused. I was confused watching. Was it? Um, I think it was Leon Bailey standing behind Onana. I didn't know what he was doing. Don't think Onana knew what he was doing. I think his mind got... I understand what they're doing. And when you think about it, it's kind of genius, really, from um, Emery to do that. Because I don't think... And what's he standing there for? Not focused. Ball comes through. It's one of those where, do you come, do you go? Do you come, do you stay? Blah, blah, blah. And he stayed and it just drifted in. And then the second one, a ball over, a, ball, a corner in, and just nobody's marking him at the back, back post. It's ridiculous. And then, as I said, I was really frustrated at United's, I'm just calling it like low football IQ decisions. Like there were so many times in that first half, offsides, you know what? You know Villa are going to play this high line. Surely we went into that game preparing for that. But we were just on the wrong side of it. And it's fine margins and all that, but you just got to be better than that. I thought Marcus Rashford, well, hey, Garnacho, what he did there, right? We've had conversations about what to do on the right wing all season. Okay, Anthony in the situation there, Jaden Sancho in the situation there. Well, we found the solution there. Garnacho, so far at United, when it's been Rashford and Garnacho, it's been Rashford who's gone out to the right really sometimes and Garnacho been on the left. And I think because Ten Hag, A, probably believed that he could get more out of Marcus Rashford on that side. And B, I don't know whether he felt that Garnacho was capable of impacting the games as much from the right as he does from the left. That's out the window now. Garnacho, wow. A proper world-class star performance from him on the right wing. So that gives Rashford the opportunity to come back in on that left wing. Don't think he did it tonight. I think Rashford is still, Rashford's kind of looking like Hoyland. But if that's going to be a game there where Hoyland, I hope he feels light as a feather. Walking out of Old Trafford tonight. The weight it was being lifted off his shoulders. And what and it was a very, very important goal. And by the way, a great goal as well. I think so anyway. Moved his body in off the post. I don't know whether it came off his foot or his shin. Don't really matter. Winner is a winner. But for for Eric Ten Hag, those players delivered in that second half. I still personally feel things just look a bit complicated. In and out of possession, different systems, move here, go over there, Delo will be over there. It feels good. Let's simplify it, Eric. Truth be told, if we weren't going through a takeover, I think there's a possibility that Ten Hag would have been sacked and could have been sacked earlier. Now, I don't actually believe that that's the right thing to do, and I've explained that a million times. But Eric's got an opportunity now because this Ineos thing is going to be taken four to six weeks before anything real decisions can actually be made. Use it, Eric. 
Use that game there. Build on it. I'll tell you one thing that did annoy me, actually, though. After conceding both goals before Hoyland, we need to conceded straight away. We conceded the second goal within five minutes of conceding the first. It's just dumb. And that's what I mean about football IQ, focus and switching on and off. Man, these players are bad at it. But Rasmus, if you cannot celebrate that, then I don't think you will ever celebrate anything as a football fan. 3-2 winners against a very informed Villa. Let's see if United build on it. The amount of times I've said that this season, I've been let down. But United delivered in that second half. 